Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today I am reviewing the TiVo Up Tarantula Pro 3D Printer. TiVo Up as a company has had a very long history, involving multiple rebrandings and even a corporate takeover. They were originally TiVo, rebranded to Homer's for a few years, until finally coming back as TiVo Up. The TiVo Tornado has been my main 3D printer for the last four years, so I was excited to see what the TiVo Tarantula Pro has to offer. So let's get into it. Before we begin, this TiVo Up Tarantula Pro was sent to me for review by MadeTheBest.com, an online retailer of 3D printers, laser cutters, and power tools. They are not paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. However, I do have affiliate links in the description, so if you are interested in any of the 3D printers or accessories that they offer, a portion helps to support this channel. So let's get started. The TiVo Up Tarantula Pro is a filament-based 3D printer with a build volume of 235 millimeters by 235 millimeters by 250 millimeters. It has a very angled, stylish appearance, which I personally like. The hot end consists of a 0.4 millimeter brass volcano nozzle with dual cooling fans on either side of the hot end. The volcano nozzle has a larger melt zone, which normally allows for faster extrusion. The hot end is fed 1.75 millimeter filaments through a Bowden tube from the Titan extruder. The Titan extruder works well, providing plenty of grip on the filament. A filament detector is located in front of the extruder, which will pause the prints if it detects that you have run out of filaments. All three axes ride on V-slot wheels on aluminum extrusion. The Tarantula Pro has a single Z-axis lead screw with a bearing support at the top. The spool holder is also located on top of the printer. Moving down towards the bed, the bed is a carborundum glass plate. The glass print surface is good, providing enough grip for all of my tests. The bed is supported by four spring-loaded screws for bed leveling. Unfortunately, the bed on my printer is warped with the sensor of the bed about half a millimeter lower than the corners. The Tarantula Pro has manual mesh bed leveling enabled, however, I couldn't get it to correct for the warped center. I always had to either use baby stepping to lower the nozzle after the prints has started, or manually push on the x-axis for the first couple of layers to get the first layer just right. The bed has an AC heater, which heats up extremely quickly, reaching 60 degrees Celsius in less than one minute. On front of the base is the graphical LCD panel with RGB colored backlights. You can change the color of the light, however, it overrides the color once you start heating or cooling the printer. The panel is okay to use, although slow to respond compared to the nicer modern user interfaces available these days. Next to the panel is a full-sized SD card slot. They include a 512 megabyte SD card. While that size is fine for storing a handful of G-code files, I don't know that they still made cards of that capacity. Around the back is a mini USB port, as well as a micro SD card slot. Taking off the bottom covers, expose the MKS Robin E3D version 1.1 control board, which is a 32-bit board running a version of Marlin 2 firmware. My board has a TMC2208 stepper drivers, although TiVo Up's website lists them as an optional upgrade. Those stepper drivers are quiet, so it is good to see the upgrade over the old A4988 drivers. The TiVo Up Tarantula Pro comes mostly pre-assembled. Four screws attach the Z and X axis gantry to the bed, and then a couple more screws to attach the hot end carriage. Screw in the spool holder on top, plug in the cable bundles, and you are ready to level the bed. The LCD panel walks you through the leveling process by moving the hot end to the four corners. However, a timeout on the LCD is extremely short, and would always kick me back to the main screen before I was done adjusting the corner. That made the leveling process very annoying. And as mentioned before, the warp bed made it almost impossible to get an even first layer. Cura 5 has a built-in profile for the TiVo Tarantula Pro. It was never rebranded to TiVo Up. However, the print volume in that profile is incorrectly listed as 240 millimeters by 240 millimeters by 260, instead of the actual 235 by 235 by 250. So you'll need to adjust that. So let's take a look at the prints. As always, you can find the settings, models, and filament I used on my 3D print log page linked in the description. First up, the 3D Benchy. With two shells, the infill pattern is very visible on the outside surface. Other than that though, the rest of the prints is pretty high quality. The hole is smooth and the layers look consistent, and there is no drooping on the overhangs of the windows or doors. Not a bad showing. Next up is the Low Poly Squirtle by Floalistic. At three shells, the infill pattern is much less apparent. Overall quality is good. There are only a few visual inconsistencies when you catch the light at just the right angle. However, it was this print that showed me the problem with the warped bed. The larger bottom layer caused issues with bed adhesion, and I ended up needing to manually push the hot end to get the first layer to stick. When I released it over the next few layers, that caused those layers to become weaker, and they broke when I pried the print off the bed. So the bottom is rough. 
Next is the Joy Fidget by Tomu Designs. This had more gaps in the top surfaces, around the joystick, and the spiral. It was also extremely difficult to remove from the bed without damaging the outside. But as a positive, the two pieces fit together nicely, except for the rough seam from the damage. This Working Ocarina by Renato T is a fun print, and the TiVo Up Tarantula Pro printed it well. Even with three shells, you can still see a hint of the infill pattern, so you'll want to adjust the infill overlap percentage within the slicer. The layers are consistent, and the bridging on the overhangs is nice, thanks to the dual cooling fans. Moving on to something larger, this Grumpy Pumpkin by Scramp Bell was printed with 0.3mm layers at 60mm a second, and it is rough. Some sections are great, but it looks like the ridges caused under extrusion as the hot end changed directions. And as we curve towards the top, more and more gaps start to appear in the surface. I'm not quite sure what settings would need to be tweaked to fix those, besides really slowing it down. And finally, let's look at the vases. The TiVo Up Tarantula Pro handled spiral vase mode just fine. The power loss detection didn't interfere with the vase mode. Due to the incorrect cura dimensions, I accidentally scaled the vase to 260 millimeters, 10 millimeters taller than the actual max height. The vase printed well, except for the very end where it maxed out the height. I ran into a variety of issues with the TiVo Up Tarantula Pro. I've already mentioned some of the annoyances, like the warped bed and too quickly timing out on the LCD panel. But I ran into a major mechanical issue pretty quickly. The Y-axis belt would jump off the guide bearing within a few minutes of starting a print. After talking with the TiVo Up support, they determined that it was a malformed belt, and they sent me a replacement belt and Y-axis tensioner. Replacing the parts were easy, all of the parts were easily accessible. And after the replacements, I was able to finish all of the prints for the review without the belt slipping off again. The other design issue is the filament detector. It feels like a last minute add-on without taking account the angle of the spool holder. The filament makes a sharp angle entering the detector, rubbing against the upper surface. There's no slot for a PTFE tube, and the entrance isn't a metal like brass like you see on other filament detectors. So rather quickly, the filaments will start to wear away the plastic of the detector. So in conclusion, the TiVo Up Tarantula Pro feels like a pro printer from 2018. The volcano nozzle can really melt filaments, but the print quality I saw at moderate speeds left a lot to be desired. In the age of responsive, full-color graphical touchscreen displays, the slow LCD panel feels a little antiquated. And the quality control issues with the warped bed and the belts made me feel more anxious than overjoyed while printing. But I guess anxiety is to be expected around a tarantula. The TiVo Up Tarantula Pro sells for $269, and you can use the code TP30 for $30 off through madethebest.com. So thank you all for watching my review of the TiVo Up Tarantula Pro. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you are in the market for your next 3D printer, check out my other reviews, like my review of the Soval 3D SV01 Pro, or see what other printers madethebest.com has to offer. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.